Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. Sorry, I, I do have to check to make sure OBS is actually recording my microphone even after I start recording. So I realized that I never really did a video on the official version of Nabora, in other words, KDE with a theme, but I figured I'd do it today to kind of answer some questions. Now, this is going to be an official install, so we're going to want to go down to the NVIDIA section because the NVIDIA ISOs are the ones you're going to use when you have NVIDIA. And um, I really don't want to because I want to go to the 656, the 565 drivers afterwards, but I'm going to have to do that another time, I guess. But for this video, we're going to be grabbing this version right here. And ah, Jesus, I don't like when sites do this. Look at all... The why is it scaling? Look at it, it scales. It's annoying. There we go. Now we can see a little bit better. Now, I might be too big. I don't know with this video if I am or not. I don't know if I'm going to fully be having my webcam in the whole video, but I just wanted to have myself here <clears throat> to sort of push onward, I guess. So we're going to hit download. We're going to agree. And we're going to hit save. Uh, can we actually just do this automatically for files now? Yes, save. How fast are we going to download? Oh, it's a good day. It's a good day. Look at it go. Now I'm not wiping out Arch. I am going to be wiping up Pico S4 for this. But I want to reset up Pico S4 uh, anyway later on down the road because I tested it and right now it's very stable. I love it very much. And each time and each time that I, each time that I end up installing it, I report more issues, we do things, it gets more stable, and eventually I won't need to do any more testing because it will be as stable as possible. But the last time that I did some stuff, uh, we found a few more issues and those were fixed. So thank you to the developers Cosmo and uh, Ferraro for fixing those. That was awesome of you. So I'll be back when this is done downloading. We're going to move it to the USB and we're going to get going. All right, so now that it's done downloading, uh, what I can essentially do is go in here and check to make sure that my downloads aren't having anything weird in them. And uh, we're basically going to move this thing to USB because that's what we need to do. So just drag and drop onto my vent toy uh, USB drive. Uh, making this is pretty simple and simplistic. You just download the application, start it up. You click file first, enable GPT, okay, not MBR, disable secure boot, and then just choose the drive you want. If you want to, you can even uh, put it on a US, uh, put it on, what is it called? An SSD that you have lying around like this. Okay, this is a piece of crap, by the way. You could also put it on an NVMe and use an NVMe as a USB boot drive. Everything is possible with Ventoy. But beware, if you have anything on there, it's going to destroy the data. But GPT is a must, understand? So I'm going to click in here, and I have a ton of stuff in here. This is where I do all my backups. We're going to take this, and I'm going to end up putting this into the ISO folder. And these are all the ISOs that I currently have. And as you can see, there's the GNOME one, and there's the official one now. We got two nests going on. This is the older one. We're deleting that. And yeah, we should be good to go to boot up, install, and I'm going to pray Omniflunkus Moratati, great googly moogly, that we're going to be able to record during the installation. And yes, I actually do use words like that. If you don't know what Omniflunkus Moratati means, look up the red and green show. Good God, Canadians. Know your stuff. Wish me luck. Not that I'm going to need it. Well, we are on the live desktop environment with full GPU acceleration. Uh, this is official Nabora 40. Nabara 40. So it's just like every other install. It's like the GNOME install. It's just on KDE. So we hit next, next, English US. We're going to be doing an erasing disk on the plus and we're going to do a swap with hybrid which is recommended by the main developer, GE himself. So I'm sure someone will argue in the comments below that they know better. Uh, someone always does. And password. I'll just put 
KDE there. We're not going to automatically log in because that's just can lead to a lot of issues. And I wish this thing would stay center. And there we go. Now we're installing. That's it. Now, there were other options back there um, during the installation where if you're on Windows, you can do an install alongside, choose the drive, and as long as the Windows is GPT, which it should be, if it's MBR, I don't know what you're doing in life these days, but stop it. Uh, if it's GPT, it will uninstall directly alongside Windows. You get to pull the bar on the bottom back and forth to tell it how much space you want to use for the install. So you can half it or give it a smaller bit. You can basically dual boot this, test it side by side if you want to. And then eventually when you're ready, you can replace Windows with Linux, which a lot of people are doing these days. Uh, Linux is actually becoming very well and widely used. I've had more comments saying I've switched to Linux because of you than I've ever seen people say Windows is better. That's how much Linux is becoming a very well recognized thing in gaming and I'm proud of it. It's going to take a very long time. I'm not saying this is the year of Linux gaming. It's going to take a very long time for Linux to gain the same amount of market share that Windows does. But as long as Linux keeps pushing forward and things keep going very well, you will see Linux up there one day right below Windows or above Windows and people will be very happy. All we have to do, I'm saying it again, is we need to start pressuring developers to support Linux. We need to go in there as a herd of people, as a colony of people, as whatever, and make our voices heard. We could start with Affinity on Linux, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, go into the forums. Literally everybody comment, we want Linux support. We want Linux support. We want Linux support and don't stop until they give it to us because they just made ARM64 support for Windows. Okay, like, you could have also released a Linux version at the same time. It's just people don't press enough. You want something done, but you do. You ask for it. Also, this should have been white. Let's be honest. What the hell? Come on. <sighs> anyway, it's filling up the file system. It's doing its goodness. It's basically unloading. Once you're done in the once you're done here, we will head into the OS itself, and we will of course run through the setup there of updating everything that needs to be updated through the updater, and hoping that the updater does not give us any real issues. So I will see you on the Nabara desktop. Okay. Stay with me. We're doing this again, and it's uh, I've gotten used to how this works. All right, so we're on the desktop, and the first thing that it's going to ask you is if you want to update. Now, before we do anything, I want to let you know, Discover is not here. Don't install Discover. Don't use Discover. If you need to update things, use the updater, okay? Please. If you need something to update your flat packs, you could do a flat pack install warehouse. Okay, great. Now, if you ever want to update the OS, you just search, you just search update and there's update system. That is the only thing you use to update the system. You don't do sudo DNF update dash dash refresh unless you're told to use this always. All right. You won't break your system this way. It will handle everything. Now we're going to go over a very important step that matters first, but mostly we're gonna just run the updater and then we're gonna go over the rest later. As you can see, it's gonna ask you for privileges. And since you are the owner of the distro, you are gonna give the privileges. Now, this is the updater. It's very simplistic, very easy to use. It's gonna tell you everything that uh, needs to be updated here. Uh, that includes NVIDIA drivers, Grub, KDE itself, kernels, Mesa, you name it. If it needs to be updated, it's going to pop up here. Now, just let it run. Don't have any worries. Don't do anything silly. We're just going to let it run. And then once it's done, it's going to let us... We're going to hit yes to this, obviously. And uh, it's going to perform this first this matters you want your media you want your codex you want everything else because if you didn't well you're not going to have very much are you 
All right, let it do that. Now it's going to give you the option to update once everything is finished. Checking for various known problems. That's what this does. We're going to hit install update. All right, sit back and enjoy the ride. It's going to take a couple of minutes depending on your internet speed or how everything is set up. What is this down here? This is telling me that I'm screencasting a lot. Yeah, because I have multiple different versions of the screencasting. Let's get rid of this one. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to get rid of that one. Now I only have three. I don't know where the third one is. Oh, hi everybody. So it's over here. Yeah, I'll kill that one too. Great. So now we only have two and that's the ones that I want. Now, if I wanted to, I could give you a closer up look of the application itself. And I'm going to just do that right now. So this is the application itself. I'm going to put me in this window right here. Great. And as you can see, this is our updates. ACK mods, NVIDIA drivers, of course, kernels. That's the 6.11.4 or 5 kernel. Uh, logins. There's Mesa, Vulkan drivers. Plasma's updating to 6.2.2, I hope. Or it's just 6.2.1. And... Uh, Blue, so basically Bluetooth's updating, Breeze is updating. Yeah, a lot of stuff. I just saw Cups there, which is your printing protocols. Firefox is updating, firmware updater, everything like that. There's your game mode. There's your Git, your G stream. Look at all of it. It's just a lot of updates. It's 681 updates. There are new ISOs coming. And uh, my guess, he's waiting for the new message drivers to come out and he's probably waiting for 6.2.2 and a bunch of other stuff to come out. And I find that very nice of him to do so because you don't want to just release a new ISO and then a major update comes out and kind of ruins it for you, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's the kernel right there. See it? 6.11.3, which is a bit outdated, but it's still in the newest category. I don't think 6.11.5 introduced much that was new. Maybe some Mesa Vulcan updates or something. Who knows? But so far, so good. Look at that. Oh, 6.2. Oh, 6.2 is so buggy. 6.2.2 is less buggy, which I'm going to give them credit for. I don't hate KDE. If people ever tell you I hate KDE, just basically send them the video that states I don't hate KDE. Now it's dealing with fixes and symbolic links and stuff like that, which is great. Never thought I'd have to run through an updater like in this amount of detail, but I have to because there's a lot of people out there who are worried warts and, uh, you know, I want to be as informative as possible. Yeah. Go. You got this. You got this. I don't know if it's stuck or it's just doing stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's like just chilling on a certain file, trying to finish downloading it. Uh, it's doing the DKMS auto install for the kernel, most likely or a lot of other stuff as well. All right. Fair enough. That does take a while. I wish that this had more detail on what was going on instead of it being a tiny window. I mean, I'm sure we can just max it out like this, but then you can't really see it, can you? So I'll leave it like this, nice and squashed. Actually, let's just make that a little bit bigger. That way we can see what's going on. So it successfully updated ACK mods and DMs. Okay. So this is the problem that we have is ACK mods and Drawcot. So after this is finished, we need to go over some things in the terminal. And you don't actually have to use the terminal, but if you want to ensure that you don't end up getting a black screen on boot, you're going to need and want this extra step if you're on NVIDIA. If you're on AMD, you don't ever have to really worry. It's the updater that usually causes this issue, and there's an easy way to fix it. It's not really an NVIDIA issue. It's more like, I don't know, it just didn't successfully run. But uh, yeah, this is going to take a minute. 
And that's no exaggeration because it's almost been a full minute. Now it's 120. I need to go and. Yes. Thank you. See, he knows what's up. I need to go check to see if my packages are delivered. Because if it is, I'm going to be able to record some really cool videos today. All right, so it's still out for delivery. So what I ordered was a tripod for my phone because my phone has the ability to record ProRes and holding it still is the problem, right? I don't really have anything to do that. So I bought this big old ass tripod. It sits it in there so you're able to tilt, swirl, do whatever you need to for the camera. And that will allow for more detailed unboxings and videos. And as you can see, I'm all lit up properly, right? The screen lights me up, but it's mostly disfused by the main light in front of me. And uh, that's because I bought a light diffuser. It's not really set up very well. I'm going to have to figure that out. But yeah, this should be done by now. I don't know why it's not done. Maybe it's double, triple checking. I don't know. But it's a lot easier if we just do this now then. So I'm going to open up selector. Where's the selector? Okay, I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to open up the selector. Selector, where are you? This is the terminal. Okay, this is called console. For those who are new, we're going to just blow this up. We're going to do sudo act mods. Then we're going to do no, don't don't reboot yet. We're going to do these two things. So end and then we're going to do sudo draw pod dash F regenerate all. OK, and this is to ensure if you're on Nvidia that you don't have a black screen. This is one of those things that is an absolute must or bust type scenarios. OK, because you don't want to have any issues. Now, I'm not going to go over customizing the OS. I think that would be a bit ridiculous. I mean, if you're on here, you're on here for the theme because this is all that separates this from the official KDE version. And I don't feel like messing it around or anything. But if you do want me to do a video customizing KDE to Helen back, all you got to do is ask and I'll do it. Mind you, I'm not going to be doing any theming. OK, I have found applications that let me get around theming. So we're done. We can reboot and we won't reboot in a black screen. Thank you guys. If you watch this video, you have experiences with this, don't forget to comment below. And remember, if you've had bugs in the past with Nabora, that was the past. Leave it there. No one needs to hear about it because bugs happen to every distro and it's going to happen to the one you're on now. You can cope all you want, but that's just fact. Nabora is a damn good distro. And it gives you NVIDIA out of the box. It gives you Steam. It gives you everything you need. It gives you a great OBS version. It's always up to date. It's awesome. And it has lots of developers, whether you want to believe it or not. And uh, GE's a great person. Lion's a great person. Yeah. See how I'm hesitating on that last part? No, I'm kidding. Lion's fine. I'll see you guys in the next video. Do not forget to subscribe to like this video. If you want to become a member on my YouTube, the button is right there. You can just hit join. And you can also check the description for that. Or if you want to donate using Ko-Fi, feel free. It all helps in the end to make a better channel. Bye, everybody.